Good evening and welcome to Spiritual Unity Movement's Full Moon World Healing Ceremony, celebrating spiritual healing. My name is Dina Efferson Williams and we are here tonight to receive and radiate spiritual energy. We gather together this time to celebrate and meditate during the full moon. The full moon is a powerfully energetic time and when we come together during these energies, we heal each other and our beloved planet. The SUM mission statement is, to celebrate the spiritual unity of all life and raise the consciousness of light and love through community meditation and education and to inspire and empower those who attend the World Healing Meditation Ceremonies and all of humanity with the life transforming experience of healing, oneness and unity. We are saving our planet from the inside. As we move within these new energies, we are reminded to be love to send love, and to allow ourselves to receive love. We have a beautiful ceremony planned for you this evening featuring Martine Espino. And for those of you who have not met or experienced Martine, you are in for a real treat. With a musical career which began at age 11, Martine has gifted the world with the music of indigenous Mexico, rich in both the ancient and the modern music of this rich and diverse country. Martine will speak about his music, his life, and the mystery. His music will lift you and move you. This is the night to let the energy within the music take you over. Tonight, during our opening ritual, will be Kathleen Ale. The Om Shanti chant will be led by Florence Riggs. And remember to grab your percussion instruments for this one you want to play along. And I will be back to lead you through the meditation. Performing our closing ritual will be Burl Bowlerjack. And we are grateful for your presence tonight. So just sit back. Relax and enjoy as Spiritual Unity Movement brings you its full moon world healing ceremony. Thank you. Good evening and welcome. I'm Kathleen Ale and I'm going to be doing the rituals tonight for our full moon world healing meditation. I'm going to begin with an invocation. Father, Mother, God and Goddess, please be with us here now. Hold this space sacred for which we may do our work. Open our hearts to your golden light that we may radiate love into the hearts of all. Open our minds to your divine knowledge that we may radiate understanding into the minds of all. Open our spirits to your infinite presence that we may radiate awareness into the spirits of all. One heart, one mind, one spirit, unlimited and indivisible. Be still and know that I am God. Acknowledging that spirit is one and that the paths of God are many, we will honor the great religions and many of the names of God with quotes from many of the spiritual belief systems on the topic of love. A bell will be rung and a candle lit as the names of divinity are sounded, after which we will sound the Om. Om is an ancient and a sacred tone. It's a deepening, really. Sounding the Om allows an intoning of grace and equanimity. There is no right or wrong way Simply relax into your own tone, open to the nuances of the sacred sound as it moves through you. Our opening ritual will conclude with all of us sounding the Om several times, each in our own note and in our own time, in a continuing freeform rhythm, creating a tapestry of healing sound. We honor all faiths as expressions of the great spirit of God, the divine essence. May the wellspring of love find in us an unimpeded channel. Oh. 
the sacred tradition of Taoism. The Tao, spirit arms us with love. Oh. In the sacred tradition of Hinduism, Brahma, the creator, Vishnu, the preserver, and Shiva, the destroyer, one best worships the Lord through love. Oh. In the sacred tradition of Buddhism, Lord Buddha, cultivate a heart of love. Oh. In the sacred tradition of the sacred feminine, the goddess in all her forms, the Divine Mother loves, nurtures, and sustains all. Oh. In the sacred tradition of Judaism, Adonai Elohim, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself. Oh. He's owning. In the sacred tradition of Christianity, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, God is love. In the sacred tradition of all First Nations peoples of all lands, love is the medicine that holds all life together. Oh. The sacred tradition of Islam. Allah, this is love, to fly towards the secret sky, to cause a hundred veils to fall each moment. The sacred tradition of all others. You may now say any additional names of divinity that you want to invoke.
Let us now gently close our eyes and finding a comfortable position, making sure that your spine is straight, taking a long, deep breath in and out and in and out. As you take another deep breath, relax and let go of the day. Let go of the people, let go of the challenges and the stress, and just be. When you're ready, put your feeling intention into your heart center and relax. Imagine a bright, warm sun floating above your head. Its rays are emanating down the crown of your head. The sun is releasing its pure white light. This light is floating down, filling your head, your neck. It floats across your shoulders, down your arms, and out your head. It fills your torso. Your organs are now being enveloped in a pulsating and purifying light of the sun. As the sunlight continues to float down your body, through your legs, and out the bottom of your feet, it washes away all impurities, all imperfections, all pain and dis-ease deep into the central core of the earth. Your body is filled with divine energy. Right now you are whole, perfect, and complete. As the light continues to energize, pulsate and vibrate, allow it to expand your auric field. First, it fills the first layer about two inches around you. Then the second layer about 18 inches around you. And then the third, which extends about four feet around you. As you continue to feel the perfection of the light body, allow it to expand and fill this room and the room you are sitting in with divine essence. Continue to expand your awareness and divine essence out of the room you're in and imagine and intend that you are now permeating all of your city with this pure divine essence. Expand your awareness to all of your state, all of your country, and allow it to float across the globe, enveloping Mother Earth and all of her beings with the pure divine essence. The white light of perfection is now vibrating and pulsating and connecting all the beings on the planet who gather with conscious intent to heal, to balance, to harmonize, and to unify the islands of light. We have now set the vibrational tone for the Circles of Light World Healing Ceremony. And now slowly and gently, and when you're ready, bringing your awareness back into the room and to this present time. Take a deep breath and open your eyes gently when you're ready. Please join me in the Om Shanti.
a quick version of it. Let there be peace in my mind. Let there be peace in the earth. Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Shanti, Om. 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 Om, Om Shanti, Om. Peace within my mind. Peace within my mind. God and only God is moving me. Peace within my mind. God and only God I live to see. Peace within my mind. God and only God is moving me. Peace within my mind. God and only God I live to see. Peace within my heart. Peace within my heart. God and only God is moving me. Peace within my heart. God and only God I live to see. Peace within the earth. Peace within the earth. God and only God is moving me. Peace within the earth. God and only God I live to see. Peace within the earth. God and only God is moving me. Peace within the earth. God and only God I live to see. Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Shanti, Om. 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 Om Shanti, Om. Om, Om Shanti, Om. Hello everybody, my name is Martin Espino. And I guess I should introduce myself first, right? Um, I'm a guy <laughs> and I'm a um, musician. And for me, that means a little more. I play f only four instruments, voice, percussion, flutes, and stringed instruments. So that's really all the instruments. And there's your first lesson. When people go, what kind of music do you have in your culture? What kind of music do you have in your culture? Well, you have only four instruments. <laughs> and then the variety from there on. So there's some groups that decided to develop string instruments a lot, like they did in India and China. And you come to uh, uh, Mexico, for instance, and we developed crazy, you know, all the other instruments, except the only one we didn't go any further with was the bow and arrow. So you'll see the bow and arrow being played like it does in uh, many, many other cultures. It's just a very obscure instrument, often connected with uh, shamanic music because it's, you know, prim primordial instrument of uh, survival not just survival for you know attack but what i'm talking about survival for uh, food uh kind of an important thing and um so you'll see all those in, in mexico voice percussion wind instruments and only one instrument of string is the boat instrument no violins no guitars well how come there's a mariachi uh because in uh, there was a guy that came to mexico in 1519 Brought a bunch of people from Spain, and um, we're, so we're not Spanish people. <laughs> I'm Mexican, <sighs> and there's a whole bunch of funny things I've heard over the years, you know. Uh, so that, anyway, that that's that's my background. My indigenous background is Yaqui, which is the people from Sonora, Mexico. We're famous for the Danza del Venado or the Deer Dance. You can look those up on YouTube. Just go to YouTube. You probably would better be put putting something like Deer Dance Mexico or Deer Dance Sonora, or if you speak Spanish, La Danza del Venado. Because if you put Deer Dance, you will wind up with a heavy metal song. There's a group that put out a uh, system. Uh, anyway, some group put out a, a song called uh, Deer Dance. So that kind of messes up our search. Mm. 
And then the other part of me is from Durango. My dad's people are from Durango and the people that live there, many different ethnic groups. It's not just one. Uh, it's called, the, are they called the Tepehuano people? And uh, te, so I'm part Tepehuano on my daddy's side and I'm part Yaqui on my mother's side. Leon se Maktawa. Vaya con Dios. Thank you for being with me. And uh, so we're going to go and talk about a few things in this uh, short 20 minutes. Things that have to do with music, some of the components of it, or even let's get more bare bone sound from your speaking tone to what you hear in orchestra. So I think um, one of the very first things I want to talk about real quick, I have some little notes here, otherwise I go off on tangents because everything's cosmic to me and relates to everything. By the way, I've been doing meditation since I was 11. I just turned 65 this June in 2020. And um, it's saved me from everything from, I mean, and especially negative stuff. Of course, positive has nothing but benefits. Um, when I got into it, it wasn't, I wasn't told what it was. Because there was this television show called Yanaki. And all I remember is they would chant that in the beginning of the show. And there'd be someone sitting in a lotus position. And then they would go relax your feet, your legs, your tummy, your, your heart, your body, your shoulders, your arms. Let it out. Don't go to your head because it'll... Your brain will analyze it, let it come out of your mouth, let your breath come out, relax. And I used to think, oh, that's kind of weird. Hey, wait a minute, that's pretty cool. So, um, yeah, yeah, and I noticed all this whole time, you know, being Mexican, my, I never, I just realized my mother never came into the room going, ¿Qué estás haciendo? You know, turn that thing off. They never said anything. They just left me there. They never asked me about it. And I used to come home from Catholic school, you know, do my homework, my Bible study and all those things like that. And then I would turn on the Yanaki and watch the thing. And then I left it on one day, a little too long, I, you know, because I forgot to turn it off. And this guy starts talking all this really cool stuff. Alan Watts. He used to have a little program that was like 15 minutes long, I think. And he would talk and it made so much sense and that hit me very heavy. So here I am listening to this guy when I'm 11 years old. There's a whole lot of other things about me too like that. So that's me. I'm a daddy, I have a 30-year-old uh, daughter, and um, that's really it. I live in Long Beach, California. Um, I also sing and dance, like I said, and do all the things. I sing in about 20 different languages, and um, play, I'm a guitar player first. That's my first girlfriend, first instrument. <laughs> and uh, now I play anything with strings on it, fretless, fretted, electric, whatever, you know, doesn't matter. Got the fingernails for the classical, and uh, all that stuff. And um, I, in, in, uh, from 11 to like I was around 18, I played electric guitar a lot. And then I didn't know how to read, I played by ear. So I, I always like to say I was street trained, then I was classically trained in college, then I was indigenously trained. Um, and that's a, a really cool thing. And then from 18 till around 23, I was in college at Immaculate Heart College. Graduated with honors, uh, 84 units into my mess into my masters. That's what my degree is. It's it's not a BA. It's a bachelor of music, with honors in performance and classical guitar, and Renaissance music, which was interesting because I also um, you know people that play these instruments, these ancient Mexican instruments, um, usually play only that or they play guitar or they're they're you know like me. A lot of them were guitar players. Hmm, interesting. Um, that the, the diva lead guitar syndrome. So I might as well put it on a flute too. And I'll be a lead guitar player on a flute. Um, I um. Let's see where am I at? Uh, so anyway, that's that's what that's that's what I do. And uh, it led right around seventy five when I was in the middle of college. I started researching the music of my ancestors because I was questioning it. I was playing lots of Spanish music, playing medieval and Renaissance music. Wishing I was back in those times. Oh, I know I was going to say that I'm one of the few people that's played the music of the time of the invasion of the, the Americas. So I know what they did. I know what they, I know the history of their instruments and the history of the Western Classical Orchestra. That's another subject. Kind of a funny one. <laughs> and it's a good one, though, too. Um, base everything I do on research, I do what I call scholarly research, not just my opinion. It's actual stuff, 
to the best of the knowledge of the observers of the time and of archaeological finds and present-day native people, how they practice their lives and music. So it's a long introduction. That's me. <coughs> um, I'm Jim and I, in case you want to know. June 10. So um, I think the very first thing would be is talking about influence and choice and how easily we can be influenced. I could use other words for that. I know you can too. How easily we accept things, especially if we don't know we're being sold. One of the very earliest ways of being sold is this one, watch. I sit in front of the TV, I get my remote and I go, look at my face too. Click the TV on, sit back and do this. And all that stuff is coming into me. To me, that's the scariest way to learn, to be not being told what you're learning. That's just what I, I've noticed, you know, and I've seen people manifest that in schools and behaviors. I teach a lot in the city schools, so I know all kinds of behaviors. Been teaching for 53 years. When I started playing when I was 11, by the time I was 13, I was playing the uh, Are You Experienced record, Jimi Hendrix. And by 13, I was been, I've was i been teaching my peers and, and other people, even people older than me at that time. And I've been teaching in the city schools and touring everywhere. And, uh, you know, so believe me, what I say is experiential, not r opinion, not wrong. Um, so what we, we are so influenced by things around us. And all the way down to the music and the sounds we listen to. And sometimes we'll say, I can't listen to that, it's, it's out of tune, you know, or it uh, sounds strange to me. And sometimes all you gotta do is open up your mind and your heart and your thought processes and clear all that junk out. Like Alan Watts said, we gotta learn to shut up. So do I. And um, let just nothing be so that you can see a little clearer. It's kind of like there's always this haze and when you meditate, basically what it is, is you just let that haze blow away. Stop churning it up. And like Alan Watts says, we have a lot of noise in our mind. We just got to turn it off and shut up. You don't need to meditate for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour or two hours. You can do it for 10 minutes. Even if I don't have time. Yeah, but you sure, sure have time to pop that popcorn. Sure have time to get that, that coffee. Sure have time to make that unnecessary phone call or that unnecessary text or tweet. That time could be used for meditation. You got time for that? See, because that's because what we've learned. We've learned to do that. That's okay. We've learned to say we don't have time in many ways. <clears throat> Some of us don't have a lot of time. But I discovered that I am so busy, I don't have time. What I do is I do this magical thing. I make time. <laughs> I create time. Woo! How weird, huh? Cool. Meditation has taught me a lot of things. Uh, it's taught me to deal with the ups and downs. It's taught me to stretch time, all kinds of things like that, you know. I'm not a cosmic, that cosmic, you know, I don't, uh, you know, uh, anyway, that's another story. <laughs> but I think these things about uh, 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 how much we, we, we soak in and how much we let come in and how much we give to our kids, you know. The scariest one I hate too is, uh, put the kids over there and give them, put a video on. And all the stuff from the video is going into their little blank tape recorded minds recording things. That's my feeling, that's my experience. So that's some of that's opinion, but it's based on observation and experience from teaching and seeing behaviors and seeing what kids and adults draw up in the middle of conversations or comments. Um, I think, oh, another one. Here's is another one. Oh, we accept things without study. Like, I love these people. Well, that can't be real. It must be fake news. And and so I'm not going to do, put, put a mask on or something, let's say, okay? Um, wait, wait a minute. Are you a doctor that went to college and studied this? Oh, ignore that doctor because he's just another, you know, a fake person. So we believe these things because we're told. We're told. Yeah, but I believe that already. Yeah, because somewhere along the line, along the way, you were told. You were taught to believe these things. Everyone has their own opinion. Yeah, they do, but a lot of it's based on how the surroundings were around. 
It is. You know, it's, it's, it's like I tell all my students, I could die right now and it would still be true. It's not, oh, that's what Martin thinks. No, it's what I think too, yeah, but it's also what I've seen. Anyway, so I want to go on, okay? Now you know how I think, okay? I'll get in trouble. Um, our attention span is short. I know some videos, you know, you put a two-minute video and the analytics show that people stay 46 seconds. I go, we have got to learn to slow down this whole social media computer thing, we got to go back to where we were before. Many times I'll turn the darn phone off. You know, I don't want to have anything to do with it. I want to check and see who messaged me. They could, you know, they could message me later. You know, I'd, I'll look later. I grew up with telephones, tape recorders. And then it, it's an interesting place to be where, where I am in my age because now all of a sudden we're totally different. So I could see what it was like before. Interesting. So I do know that we need to slow down. How do you slow down? Meditation is one of the things that slows you down. It, it makes you, you know, you, I mean, you can learn to slow yourself down so all the noise will shut out. Um, try that thing I said, relax from the bottom all the way to the top. Don't go to the brain because the brain starts thinking, oh, I'm not relaxed yet. Forget that. Go all the way, especially when you sing, go all the way, go to the heart and the heart lets it out of the mouth. Just like, get your jacket on. Use that same energy. Ah, and sing out. But I don't can't hold a note. Yes, you can. If you can hold a long breath. But I can't do it that long. You can certain you do two things. You can do short breathing. Or wow. You do this one. When you're sleeping, you're doing long breaths. Yeah. So take a deep breath. Don't blow. That's blowing. This is exhaling. Or nobody hears it. You don't need any power to blow these flutes. You simply exhale. I don't have enough air. It's not talking about air. You exhale slowly. Let me show you something real quick. Because this has does have to, this could empower you to play a flute. Okay. Hey, I've never played this one. Yes, you can. You can play it. Cool, huh? So you can empower yourself with breathing. Some of the things you already do. Uh, neuroscience is something to look at. Look at a book called The Power of Sound by Joshua Leeds. It's the, there's many, many books on it. There's other authors like uh, Daniel Levitin. Um, right now I'm spacing out. Oh, Oliver Sacks. Um, Andy Patel, Andy Patel. And you can look at these lectures on YouTube. But you're already doing things right now. And it's always great to know what it is you're doing so you can do it again. <clears throat> uh, one of the things you do already right now to relax yourself and bring yourself down to a de-stress level is you'll put music on to relax. I ask my kids, because I love talking to my kids about this. I love using them as my uh, uh, gauge on how humans are, right? Um, I said, guys, do you ever put music on when you have a bad day? They go, yeah. Let me tell you what you do. You get home, oh, I had a really hard day. Things are really tough. I think I want to put my music on. That'll make me relax and you know, it'll make me chill out and I'll just sit here and just close my eyes or maybe I might clean my room while I do the music. I'll tell you kids, this is what you're really saying. I had a really tough time today, a little stressful. I'm gonna put on some sound that I know will control me and because I'm going to open up and let myself be controlled by the sound. Also naturally, we are reactive to sound from our environment. Our ear says, is it safe? Can I close my eyes? Can I go to sleep? Do I recognize those sounds? Is that sound hostile or is that sound calm? We do all that. It's talked about in that book. It's really, it's not new age baloney or, you know, fake conjecture. We talk about fake, huh? Um, this is things based in science and fact. Boom. Um, so that's what we do, okay? Um, let's see. I know I missed the point right there. But anyway, that's what you do. You can put music on, make yourself a song list of your favorite songs. Now, you can also make a, song, a, a list of tones. I've discovered before I studied neuroscience, how come low tones chill everybody out? 
And how come, like, in other words, like big drums like this, don't get a little tiny drum. If you can get a big one, man, it's still, it's that killer. Not only do I hear the sound, but this thing emits such a sound wave, it's touching my face. And uh, that's a long story, but basically that kind of sensitivity really does things to your whole mental capacity and your spiritual well-being. Rain sticks are great. I make all these things. That drum was from Mexico, though. This is a big gourd. White noise causes you, causes you, get this, I'm not gonna keep explaining it, but white noise basically controls you, cancels out other, you can look it up, cancels out other, other noise, even though there's noises around you and you hear them, your brain hears that first. It's the same sound as the, as the bloodstream running through the mother's uh, uh, system when you're in the liquid environment. And when you're in liquid, you actually hear two or three, four times louder. So when you're in there, you hear shh, and every time we hear these rain sticks, we go, wow, it's so relaxing. I go, yeah, it's because it's controlling you. We have an, an, an ancient primordial uh, connection and a commonality. Yes, we're connected, actually. All different races are. And um, we actually relax when we hear this white, what they call white noise. Um, beautiful. Get yourself a rain stick and just chill. Breath work, taking a deep breath. Take a deep breath. In other words, within a pulse. Or without a pulse, whenever you breathe, whenever you wanna breathe and exhale, do it. That activates your parasympathetic system in the, um, I'm still learning this, okay? In the frontal precortex area, and that causes your, your brain to shut down and relax and not shut down <laughs> shut, you just shut down and relax all the noise and stuff like that and it also affects your decision making and it's a beautiful thing that's what that's what meditation does do not go into meditation thinking that you're going to get better go into it thinking i have to focus on just not thinking about things phone rings ignore it building on fire well get out but basically ignore all those things right and so those are the things you can do, okay? You do this already. Uh, a soundtrack of music you like, long and low tones like gongs and bells. I don't like gongs too much, but I like some of the low bells, the high-pitched Tibetan bells, kind of like, uh, they, you know, and it's everything what you're akin to. Also, it's what you vibrate. It's called parasympathetic. I clap my hand and something in this room will, sh will vibrate. I hit one of my, I play my conch shell and something in this room will vibrate. It's, a par it's a, just a fact. Anyway, there you go, there's some things right there. And I think that has to do a lot with world health. If we know ourselves first, we're not being taught that because we're accepting other things. We're accepting the tension that's going on. Let's accept, let's, we have to, I think we're gonna have to create this ourselves. You know, we have to go back and meditate and you take care of yourself. And just like our ancient poets in Mexico, they said, you are the singer. You, and, and singer means you let out the elegant speech, and that's how we thought of music. Elegant speech, educated sound, and, and, and cosmic knowledge. That's, that's what it was. The Spaniards wrote other things. That's what most people believe, and they believe what the Spaniards wrote. But I'm telling you what I've studied, okay? So these things say you're the singer. You're the one that bestows the flowers that intoxicate. You're the one in the house of springtime, that means while you're young, that makes people happy. These are words that are like you know, in the 1400s that were memorized and then later uh, dictated to the Spaniards when they asked us, okay? So this whole myth about, you know, who the Aztecs were bloody. Oh, that's right, the Spanish were totally nice. You know, things like that. At least they documented their stuff and uh, they didn't document our, our inner knowledge. So, yeah, so this all where leads to world health. You know, you, you, you think of world health, but think of yourself first, make yourself healthy. What are the other one? Eat right. Eat the right stuff. Find out what's the uh, the main component of your cultural uh, 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 foods. Maybe that's I discovered that red meat uh, is not in my cultural makeup. My doctor says there's no way I can find this out, but I can tell you that it's killing you. And I stopped it. And for three years, I excuse me, I stopped it. And um, she told me that I lowered my bl bad blood cholesterol by nearly a hundred percent. 
So see, she's going, yeah, see what you're talking about, Martin, was right. You do have something in you that doesn't let this soak in. Your body says, send it somewhere else. <clears throat> so, the develop the mental. What you accept, what you don't accept. As Nisawalcoyot said, be of divine heart. And have truth in your words. And um, spiritual is not religious. It's what's the inner self, the inner being, the one that goes, I really need love. You could say that. I really feel depressed. You can say that. That's your inner being. To me, that's your spiritual side. That's how I, I look at it. I don't look at it. It's not a religion thing. Um, and the other one is the physical one. Meditation, yoga, speaking good words and stuff. Bless you. I hope to talk to you soon, okay? See ya. Hope I said things that made sense. And thanks for the opportunity. Peace. And I want to play some beautiful instruments for you from Mexico. I have here instruments made of clay and bamboo that, and gourd, clay, bamboo, and gourd that I made, and some instruments made of clay from my good friend Javier Quijasi Child. I've been doing serious scholarly research since 1975, and I'm very tough on where I get my resources from and things like that. So I know where everything I have, where it's from, I know how I'm playing, uh, all of it based on research, and I just hope you enjoy it, and thank you. This is just about making you feel good anyway. This is the piece called Ritual Mestli, or Ritual, Moon, moon Ritual.
switch. So that was the moon ritual. Now we want to go to, I think, a song called the Power Woman or Warrior Woman, whichever one you want to choose. It's not always about war, but it's just that power sense, right? Okay, you, you get me. So this is a very powerful women's dance to all the fem feminine energy out there. Thank you for uh, bringing me here to this earth to, from my mom.
think? Well, for my last piece I want to play for you, I want to play something that I actually wrote for my daughter, and it's for all of you as well. It's called Tu Sonrisa, Your Smile. That's what we need right now. Not turning everything into some kind of political thing and then say it's true, and then someone says it's a lie, and then someone says, listen to this, and you believe it, and then you don't believe it, and you're arguing, and it's like, it's just too much wacky stuff. Language is falling apart. There's lying and telling the truth is mixing together. And I think the only true things out there are our breath, which goes on forever, our pulse, boom, 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 boom. It's not one, two, three, four. It's one, 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 one. We're all one with the earth. We're pulsing at the same frequency as the earth. No one's talking about it. I mean, not, not no one, but not the important people that I mean that, oh, I'm not even saying that right either. Man, the people that have a big voice, that's, that's what I'm saying. They have a big voice in the television or some position, they can start talking about this. But it's, you know, too much of a game. All we can do is hold on to everything we have from our interior, from our inner self to give to each other. And um, that's all I wanna do, okay? I just hope you enjoy, okay? Thank you.
break in one. Tonight, we come together to create. We join with billions of others around the world to meditate in the vibration of peace, love, compassion, and joy. Right now, in this moment, we are creating a foundation together. A foundation for this new world in which we live. Our creative power lies in the breath. And so, take a moment and pay attention to your breath as we take a deep breath in and then out. Breathing in and out. Now when you are ready, place your attention on the top of your head. Draw down into your body the very presence of the power of peace, poise, grace, love, and compassion. And as you notice that with each breath you take, the energy of peace Poise, grace, love, compassion magnifies and amplifies in your very being. Notice how, with every breath, you are gently reminded that these quality has, qualities have always belonged to you. And as you continue to feel the peace, to feel the poise, the grace, the love, and the compassion, Make their way energetically throughout your system. They dissolve any and all obstacles that may come up along the way. Let's take a deep breath. And as you take another deep breath, feel the elation in your body as the blocked energy is transmuted into peace into poise, into grace, into love, and compassion. Feel that now. The mandate of the Creator is that we create. So let's now construct the pillars of our society which will balance and support us. Each pillar represents what we each personally want to add. And so we bring our personal support to the building, to the world that we are creating. And after we've completed erecting your pillar, rest in the space of the silence for about 10 minutes. The silence, the place where creation is complete. Just allow yourself to enjoy the beautiful new world that we're all creating together. The planet is assisting us in this creation. You can feel her pulse. And she is grateful for your conscious participation. We evolve ourselves. We evolve our world. And together, we are saving our planet from the end.
as you listen to the sound of my voice, let it draw your attention back to the here and now, back to the place where you are sitting. And let us take another long, deep breath in and out, feeling your body where you're sitting. Feel your, the wiggle in your toes, wiggle them now. Feel the wiggle in your fingers, wiggle them now. Rounding yourself here in this place and this time. Listening to the rain sticks, the drums, the flutes. Let them ground you in your body. to request to be added to our prayer list, or if you would like to join our mailing list to get information about upcoming events, please send an email to Liz Curran at Liz, that's L-I-Z-Z, C as in Charlie, U-R-R-A-N, at gmail.com. She'll be happy to help you. Thank you for your donations, which allows us to continue to bring these full moon world, these full moon presentations to the world. Spiritual Unity Movement is a 501c3 nonprofit all volunteer organization, and your donations are tax deductible. And so, for those of you who feel that Spiritual Unity Movement has become a spiritual nurturing community for you, please feel free to consider tithing, which is also tax deductible. You can send your tithes and your donations to Post Office Box 8592, Porter Ranch, California. 91367 or click the donate button and you will be taken to PayPal. Now I would like to take a moment to thank you for adding your energy to this beautiful evening. I can't express how important it is for all of us right now that we remember to continue to radiate the healing energy that we have received during this ceremony out into our daily lives. Thank you for joining us tonight. We will see you next month on Monday, August 3rd. And now please join Burl Buller Jack for the closing ritual. Blessings and good night. As we come to the close of our full moon ceremony this evening, let us take just a moment to savor the centered focus of healing energy that we have generated here together. Remember, as you let your own light shine, you simultaneously give others the permission to do the same. Clearly knowing yourself as an instrument of light, a being of spirit, you add one more grain of sand to the scales that hold the balance of our global future. Know that at a certain point, one grain of sand can tip the scales. You in this very moment may be that grain of sand. Let us embody the spiritual power that has been generated and received from the forces of light that guide this service. Let us focus that energy into the group center, allowing it to rise up and pour this blessing out into our world, extending the positive healing effects throughout the awareness of humankind and the consciousness of our planet. We will sound an extended free form ohm. As the sacred tone pours through you, feel yourself participating, drawing this healing love energy deeply into yourself, sending it out into your life, into our world. As we sound the ohm, let us consciously extend our blessing to 
to our planetary life, Mother Earth, including the animals and the trees, the air and the water, as well as all who, of those who are in need of healing. For those we would like to include in this healing circle, we speak their names together, now, silently or audibly. And with the power of love and intelligence, let us send out this healing light energy to transform the consciousness of humankind. Oh. Thank you and good night.